National statistical agencies and other bodies produce lots of statistics about the places that we live in. And those statistics are often collected at the individual level through surveys or through a census that many countries run every 10 years or so. But they're not usually published at the individual level to protect individuals' privacy. Instead, what happens is that information is aggregated to a local area and then published for that area. So that might say, for example, the average income in a particular neighbourhood or the number of people who have a university degree. One of the choices that statistical agencies have to make is what areas to publish that data for. And often that will be done for administrative areas. So in England, the smallest administrative area is a ward. Wards are aggregated into districts and district councils provide services like housing. Districts in turn are aggregated into counties and counties provide lots of services, social services, libraries, that sort of thing. And then counties are aggregated into regions. Now lots of statistics are produced for administrative areas and they're very useful for supporting local administration. But the problem from a statistical point of view with administrative areas is that they often change in response to changes in population or changes in how services are delivered. And that's not good from a statistical point of view because you might, for example, want to compare a particular statistic in an area this year to that same statistic last year. And if you want to make that comparison meaningful, the area needs to be the same. And so many countries have a parallel set of areas that are defined specifically for producing local statistics. In England, the smallest areas for which any statistics are produced are called output areas. And output areas are really small. They're much smaller than wards, the smallest administrative unit. So they're the smallest, most granular area that we can look at using statistical data. In other countries tend to have equivalents to this, so in the US uh, the equivalent is the census block, for example. Output areas are aggregated then up to the not very casually named lower layer super output area, which are more often known as LSOAs, which are slightly larger, and they are then aggregated up again to middle layer super output areas, or MSOAs, which are about the same size as wards. And then MSOAs can be aggregated up to district level again, above which you can use the administrative uh, hierarchy. And there are equivalents to this system in many other countries. And whenever we're thinking about these local areas, we need to remember that they are to some extent arbitrary because they've been defined for either statistical or administrative convenience. So they might not always represent the facts on the ground particularly well, and they certainly can't do in every case. So here, for example, I'm standing in Derbyshire, and that means local services are provided by Derbyshire County Council, policing by Derbyshire Police, uh, and so on. And that's true on this side of the road, which is Derbyshire, but this side of the same road is a different county, that's Nottinghamshire, and so all the services are provided by different organisations, police, fire, local uh, government and so on. But the people who live in this village think of themselves, whether they're on this side of the road or this side of the road, as living in the same place. And they do live in the same place if you stand here on the ground. If you're in a statistical agency or a local council office, you might think that these are different places, even though they're just different sides of the same road. So in summary, demographic data is often published for areas to preserve citizens' privacy. That data is often published for administrative areas to support government decision making, but data is also released for statistical areas which are more effective for measuring change over time.